Hello, this talk is on neonatal anemia. In this discussion, we'll talk about production to neonatal anemia, definition of neonatal anemia, common causes, investigation and the treatment of neonatal anemia. Because of the hypoxic environment in utero and the lack of direct gas exchange with the ambient atmosphere, fetal hemoglobin predominates throughout late gestation. Because of this increased affinity to bind and the transport oxygen compared to the mother's adult hemoglobin. This is an adaptation mechanism by which uh, a fetal body uses to deliver adequate amount of oxygen to the body. Hypoxic intrauterine environment needs uh, hemoglobin that has increased the affinity to bind and transport oxygen to the tissue. And also, since the in utero environment remains hypoxic, the normal hemoglobin concentration is relatively high at birth. Around 37 to 14 weeks, the amount of it is around 53%, whereas around 32 uh, weeks, it is around 47%. Over the first days and the weeks of postnatal life, increased oxygen in the environment reduces the erythropoietic drive. Because the baby starts to breathe atmospheric air, there is increased amount of oxygen which reaches the tissue level. This causes decreased or reduced the erythropoietic drive. There is decreased erythropoietin production. This normal developmental and the physiologic process result in slow decrease in hematocrit and hemoglobin concentration after birth. Just as you see on the image, this progressive decline in hemoglobin and hematocrit after birth is called physiologic anemia. This physiologic nadir usually occurs between 6 and 10 weeks of life for term infants. And for preterm infants, it needs the nadir earlier around 1 to 2 months of age, around 4 to 8 weeks of age, with hemoglobin concentration of 7 to 9 in preterm and 9 to 11 in term babies. After this period, that means after three months of life, oxygen delivery becomes limiting him enough to stimulate new active erythropoiesis, and the hemoglobin concentration begins to rise. When we came to definition of anemia and neonates, anemia is defined as hematocrit or hemoglobin concentration more than two standard deviation below mean for age. This might be due to three general causes. Those causes are blood loss, increased RBC destruction, or RBC production. As you see on the image, anemia is defined as hematocrit or hemoglobin more than two standard deviation below mean for age. So, in newborn of the first and the second weeks of life, hematocrit less than 45 is defined as anemia. After third week of life, hematocrit less than 40 or hemoglobin less than 12 is defined as a cutoff point for anemia in newborn. As I have said, neonatal anemia is either caused by decreased production, increased distraction, or blood loose. To start from blood loose, blood loose is the commonest cause of neonatal anemia. The most common cause of blood loose in neonates are obstetrical causes such as placental abruption, placenta previa, Trauma to placental or umbilical cord during delivery and the rupture of anomalous placental vessels. There are also fetal maternal transfusion and fetal placental transfusion. Fetal placental transfusion is due to positioning of infant above level of placenta after delivery, and it can also be due to partial cord occlusion. The other cause for blood loose is twin twin transfusion. This occurs only with monochoronic monozygotic twins and when there are placental vessels which are low shunting of blood from one twin to the other, mainly from artery to vein. The donor will have anemia of variable severity and the recipient will have polycythemia of variable severity. The other cause of anemia as a blood loses internal hemorrhage. Internal hemorrhage includes intracranial hemorrhage, subgallial hemorrhage, cephalhematoma, intraventricular hemorrhage, renal hemorrhage or ruptured viscous. 
Zazer is iatrogen platelus. This is secondary to sampling of blood for laboratory tests. This is commonest cause of anemia in a small preterm infant that stay in hospital for long term and that leads frequent blood sampling for monitoring. The second one is increased RBC distraction. RBC distraction can be due to intrinsic causes such as RBC enzyme defect, RBC membrane defect, hemoglobinopathies, and it can be due to extrinsic causes which can be immune hemolysis such as RH or ABO or minor blood group incompatibilities or acquired hemolysis such as infection, vitamin A deficiency, and the drugs. The third mechanism is decreased diabetes production. This can be due to anemia or prematurity, aplastic or hypoplastic anemia, or diamond black fox syndrome, bone marrow separation due to different viral infections, nutritional anemia usually after neonatal period such as iron, B12, and the folate deficiency. So, this is a summary of table for cause of neonatal anemia. Mainly, we classify broadly as bladelus, decreased retrocyte production, and increased distraction. When we see the clinical manifestation of neonatal anemia, this manifestation varies with the severity of anemia and the other associated conditions. There may be no sign with mild anemia, and with more severe anemia, there might be findings such as pallor, tachypnea, poor feeding, jaundice tachycardia, apnea, lethargy, organomegaly, white pulse pressure, metabolic acidosis with severe anemia, and also increased oxygen requirement if they are on ventilator or on oxygen uh, therapy. Diagnostic evaluation starts from appropriate or good history and the physical examination. You should have to ask family history of anemia, jaundice, maternal and perinatal causes, such as blade type of the mother, any complication during pregnancy and delivery, neonatal causes such as age of the neonate, presence of other physical findings that tells us the underlying cause. Laboratory evaluation depends on strain the physical finding, CBC with plat rate and the smear and reti count, blade group and the type, and also combust test if we suspect hemolytic disease due to RH incompatibility or ABO incompatibility, bilirubin total and direct, just to see whether there is hemolysis or no, and also ultrasonography for internal bleeding such as transpontanal brain ultrasound for IVH, abdomen for viscous damage or rupture, and hemoglobin electrophoresis and RBC enzymes. And also, we should have to do a test for maternal blood to look for fetal RBC as evidence of fetal maternal hemorrhage or BEDC test. When we see the treatment options for neonatal anemia, the first and the most commonly used is packed RBC transfusion. Treatment of neonatal anemia by blood transfusion depends on the severity of symptoms, the hemoglobin concentration, and the presence of comorbidities that interfere with oxygen delivery. The benefit of blood transfusion should be balanced against these risks, which include hemolytic and non hemolytic reaction, exposure to blood product preservatives and the toxins, volume overload, possible increased risk of retinopathy or prematurity in the neck for premature babies, and the other complications. To see the suggested transfusion threshold for neonates with anemia, as I've said, we depend on the age and the severity of the hemoglobin or hematocrit and also whether the patient has respiratory support or no respiratory support. During the first week of life, if the patient is on respiratory support, hematocrit less than 35 and the hemoglobin less than 11.5 is used as a cutoff point for transfusion. During the same age, if they are not on respiratory support, hemoglobin less than 10 and hematocrit less than 13 is used. On the second week, for respiratory support group, hemoglobin less than 10 and hematocrit less than 30. And for those who are not on oxygen or respiratory support, hemoglobin less than 8.5 and hematocrit less than 25. Above the third week of age, if they are on sub respiratory support, 
hematocrit lesion 25 and if they are not on respiratory support hematocrit lesion 23 is used as a cutoff point for giving oxygen the volume of transfusion should achieve the intended therapeutic goal while limiting blood product exposure Typical transfusion protocols choose a transfusion volume ranging from 10 to 20 ml per kg. Transfusion of packed RBCs is typically delivered at a rate of 3 to 5 ml per kg per hour, with a slower rate preferred for very small, acutely ill infants with a tennis fluid status. The following commonly used shorthand equation can provide a good estimate of required blood volume. So, the volume of Packed RBC to we transfused is equal to desired hemoglobin minus actual hemoglobin in gram per DL times weight of the baby times three. So by this way, we can get the amount of packed RBC that is required for the newborn to achieve our desired hemoglobin result. This is all about neonatal anemia. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more videos.